In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to solve any free fall problem. So an object that's in free fall is any object that's released and is only under the influence of gravity pulling down on it. So in order to solve these problems, one of the key components is being able to label variables and label them correctly before choosing one of these three kinematic formulas to solve for whatever you're solving for in the particular problem. And then from there, it's just basically doing some algebra. So we have a few different starting scenarios. Something could be dropped from rust. In that case, then our initial velocity would be zero meters per second. Okay, so although a problem might not explicitly say zero meters per second, look for some keywords and the starting velocity may be zero. And then other key things to pay attention to is anything going upwards is positive and anything going downwards is negative, which could be a velocity a delta y or an acceleration. Time is the only one um, out of this bunch over here that's not a vector that won't be negative. Um, and then get going to the physics concepts that go along with it, we have an initial velocity that an object is tossed up with. And then throughout that entire flight that the object is in the air, it has an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared, which means that every for every second that it's rising, you are basically subtracting 9.8 meters per second for every second that it moves. So if it's rising with a positive velocity and you are subtracting 9.8, it's going to make that positive velocity increasingly smaller until it becomes a velocity of zero at the peak, which is the instantaneous velocity at its maximum height. And then as it comes downward, it has a negative velocity. And if you're subtracting 9.8 meters per second, every second from a negative velocity, it's going to make it an increasingly larger negative number to show that it's going faster in the downward direction. Okay. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and solve three different problems. So I have a scenario over here where a person tosses something five meters per second up in the air, it reaches its peak, it falls back down and then hits the ground. The first thing we're gonna solve for is the maximum height which is our delta y. Okay, so we want to ask ourselves, what do we know? What kind of variables um, are we able to plug into our formula? The key is you need three. If you have three known variables, then you can solve for basically anything within these formulas. So we know that the starting velocity is five meters per second. We always know that the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's a pretty good start for any of our problems because so, we already have two out of the three variables that we're looking for. And as I mentioned earlier, at its maximum height at the peak, it will have a final velocity of zero. So we can go ahead and say the VF equals zero meters per second. Okay, so now when I'm trying to choose a formula, I know that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use either the second or third one because both of those have a delta Y in them. This first one does not. So if I'm taking a look at the first one, I notice that I do not have time. So I'm gonna to go to the second one and see if that works. Do I have VF? Yes, it's zero. Do I have VI? Yes, it's five. And do I have A? Yes, it's negative 9.8. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug those values in and see what I come up with for my delta Y. All right, so I plugged in all my variables into this third formula over here. I have zero squared, which is zero. 
and then five squared, which is 25. So after I subtracted 25 from both sides, it basically um, moved this 25 over here and became negative. And then I combined the two and the negative 9.8 to be negative 19.6. And that left me with one more step of dividing both sides by negative 19.6. And then I have a positive delta Y of 1.28 meters. Now moving to our uh, second problem that we're going to solve is we're going to solve for the final velocity at the very end, at the very bottom, once it reaches ground level. All right, so what you want to be careful about is if you're solving for a multi-step problem, you can't always use all of the same variables that you used previously. Because in this one, I called my VF zero, which means that I'm telling the problem that my final velocity is right here at the very peak. I'm telling the formula like that's my final position of that particular problem. Now I want to tell the formula that my final position is actually all the way over here. Okay, so we're gonna see what numbers still apply. We still have a VI of five meters per second. That still is my initial velocity. We still have an acceleration of negative 9.8 as we usually do. Okay, and now um, we need to figure out a third variable. So based on what I see here, the only thing that I see that I could place in there is this three meters right here. So I'm gonna make sure I put a delta Y of negative three meters because it's displaced downward from its original position at three meters. So it looks like this person has a little bit of height off that platform, um, but we're just gonna ignore that for this particular problem. So we have our three variables and now we wanna find a VF. So I'm taking a look at my three formulas. We have one VF over here and one VF over here. Again, we don't have time, so I'm not gonna use formula number one over here. I'm gonna use the third one again and see what I come up with for my VF. All right, so I went ahead and plugged everything into here. It was pretty straightforward. I didn't have to do any algebra. I just squared this, added it to the product of these three, and then I get 83.8 and square root of both sides. Now, one limitation of this formula is if you're finding a VI or a VF, you're finding the square root of a positive number, and initially you're, you might be squaring some negative values. So it doesn't necessarily always tell you the right sign, but we do know that it rises up, and then obviously once it reaches the ground level, it's actually moving downwards, so we have to manually place a negative in there. If it's one of the other formulas, it will naturally work itself out to be negative. Um, but as I said earlier, one of the limitations of this formula is that it's not going to necessarily tell you the correct sign. Okay, so moving to our very last problem, we are going to solve for the total time in the air. Now again, we are going to do the same sorts of things that we did before. We are going to make sure we're picking variables that apply to this specific situation, the total time, and make sure we don't just grab variables from our previous problems because they may not all apply if we're doing a multi-step problem. Now this problem over here, this final velocity one, did actually um, have all of the motion from the very beginning to end, so that would apply to all the variables that I could use for total time. And at this point, not only do I have VI, A, and Delta Y, I also have a VF. So I have a few options and I have two formulas that have time. I have this one over here and this one over here. Um, it looks like this one over here is going to be a little bit more friendly as far as working out the math because this one has an unknown T right there and there, and this one just has a T right there. So I'm going to go ahead and take these variables from here as my known variables, along with this VF, 
And I'm gonna use all of those variables and plug it into this first formula over here and then see what I come up with for time. Okay, so I got a total time of 1.44 seconds. I used my acceleration of negative 9.8, and remember it's VF minus VI, so I had negative 9.15 minus that initial velocity of five over T, and I basically just cross multiplied these two, so the negative 9.8 dropped under this uh, negative 14.15, and I got 1.44 seconds in total. Now, say for example, you're solving for a problem that doesn't ask for a VF beforehand, you may have not had all the variables you needed for this one over here, okay? In that case, you still could have plugged into this formula right here. You could have used a delta Y of negative three, the VI of five and the A of negative 9.8, but it would turn into a quadratic and it would be a little bit messier possibly. Um, but if you did have to solve for it that way, you definitely could without your VF. So to sum things up, the most important part in approaching these problems is recognizing the basic concepts of how a free fall problem works with making sure you get the directional stuff correct and include the negatives where you need them. And then you also um, use your negative 9.8 and basically every problem apply the zero meters per second at the peak if you're talking about something that reaches its maximum height. And also one final thing that you might have to um, apply to your calculations would be this, is that the VI equals the VF as long as it returns back to the initial height at which it was thrown or launched. So if something is tossed up at five meters per second and it comes back down to the same height it was tossed, you can say that the final velocity is negative five meters per second. We didn't have to use that in these three scenarios over here, so I didn't really mention that, but you could definitely use that to your advantage. So I hope that was helpful in helping you set up, understand, and calculate any type of free fall problem. Thank you for watching and listening.